Hi, Vanessa here. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet this hand warmer here. It is crocheted from the bottom and then going up in this direction. You can really make it any size you want. If you want a chart, I'll check out the pattern, which is linked in the description box. So I made this one to fit me. So I, I tried it on as I went and made it for my hand. I don't know technically, technically what size it is, but it is seven and a half inches. And then right here, it's about four and a half. And right here, it's about three and three quarters. And let's see. And that's how big the hole for the thumb is. Okay, so you'll need your yarn. I'm using bulky weight. And you'll need a set of crochet hooks. You want a larger one, which is going to be the size that's recommended by your yarn label. And one size or two size smaller for the cuffs. You'll also need a pair of scissors, a tape measure if you need it. Grab a stitch marker and a tapestry needle to weave in your ends. All right, let's get started. So I used less than half of this ball here, so I'll be able to make the other side using what's left of here. This is Joanne's buttercream. Uh, I need to make more of these for the winter <laughs> or the fall, but I'm going to use a 6.5 for the cuff part I'm going to go smaller to a USI. So Lantern Moon sent me these crochet hooks to try out and I love using them. I've been working on small little projects and um, little s swatches. So I'm going to be using the USI and K. Okay so I'm going to start with the smaller hook size. This is the I 5.5. Now this is for the cuff here. And I'm going to give you directions on this size here, but I'll explain how you can adjust for any size you want. Okay, so starting with a slip knot, I'm going to chain seven. Okay, so that's going to be the width of the cuff. You're going to chain as many chains as you'd like for the size that you want. You can work one or two rows to see if the width is good enough for you. And I say one or two rows because when you chain and work the first foundation row, your stitches may shrink. So after a couple of rows, it'll be the size that it's going to be for your project. Okay, you're just going to yarn over and pull through. That's one chain, two, three, four, five, six and seven. So now into the second chain from the hook. Here's the first and this is the second. I'm going to turn it so that I'm working through the back humps. You can work through the front if you'd like. Okay, insert your hook, pull up a loop and yarn over, pull through two loops. So that's one single crochet. You're going to go into this next chain stitch. I'm going through the back humps, another single crochet. If you need basics on crochet stitches, I'll link that in the description box and in the corner here. So just work one single crochet all the way across. Now, if you chain seven like I did, you'll end up with six single crochets. So whatever number you chained, you're going to end up with one stitch less. So if you chained 10, you'll have nine single crochets. Chained eight, you'll have seven. This is chained seven, so I have six. So at this point, you can tell just about how wide it's going to be. You can pull it out and adjust to your preference. So for the rest of the following rows, we're going to chain one and turn. Now we're going to work through the back loops. So this loop here is your chain one. So we're going to go into the first one. So if you look here, this is the first stitch here. Going through both loops is the traditional single crochet. 
This is the back loop, which is where we're going to work into. And this is the front loop that we're going to avoid. Remember this very first one is your chain stitch. So now you're going to work into the back loop of the very first stitch here. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Next stitch through the back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. So you're going to work one single crochet through the back loops of every stitch across and you should still have the same number of stitches. So I will end up with six stitches. And if you're a beginner, make sure you count each of your stitches after every row because you can miss easily miss a stitch on the end or work too many stitches and your work is going to start either getting bigger or getting smaller. So I recommend counting your stitches every time you've complete a row. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so you're just going to repeat that row for as many rows as you want so that it fits around your wrist. And you wanna make sure it's an odd number of rows. So you're going to end on the same side as your beginning tail, which is this side here. So you go back and forth and you'll end here. For this one, I worked 23 rows. So I'm going to go ahead and work 23 rows and then we'll join our cuffs. Okay, so I have 23 rows and what you can do is place it around your wrist to see if it fits. Okay, okay, you can see here, I didn't want it too tight. I like mine loose. Also know your yarn because this is 100% wool and doesn't stretch as much, but some of my acrylic yarn will stretch a lot after it's been worn a few times. So keep that in mind when you're measuring, um, placing it on your wrist to measure. So you can see here, it's not tight at all. And I wanted that because usually I have bracelets or something on. Okay, so we're going to join. You're going to grab the beginning foundation and make sure it's in front of you. And then you're going to bring it together with the last row you worked here. We're going to work slip stitches to join the two together. Insert your hook into the first stitch here. If you didn't go through the back humps, your stitches won't look like this, but just go through the one loop that you do see. And on the last row here, we're going to work through the back loops. Okay, pull through and through the loop on your hook. Next stitch. back loop on this side and work a slip stitch. So you want to work slip stitches through the foundation, whether it's two loops or just one, depending on how you started your foundation, and then the back loops of the last row you worked here. Pull through and th oh, through the loop on your hook. So remember I have six stitches. I want to make sure I work six slip stitches. Okay, now we're going to turn so that the seam is on the inside. And there is your seam. Now we're going to grab the larger hook size. I've been using the USI 5.5. I'm going to change to the USK 6.5. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to work a setup round and we're going to work one single crochet at the edge of each of these rows. So one row will be one stitch. So I have 23 rows. I'm going to work 23 single crochets around. Start with a chain one. In the same stitch, you want to work one single crochet. On the next row here, follow these sort of V shapes here. I always forget, but please place a marker if you need on the very first single crochet. Insert your hook into the very top one and then work one single crochet. And then this, there's another row here between these two. You're going to go through the top and make sure you go through two loops and work your single crochet. Here's this row again. Follow these. So what I mean by the V shapes are here. Okay, so if you follow these loops that look like the side of your single crochet or a knit stitch, the very top one is right here. And what you want to do is in insert your hook in between those two loops. and work your single crochet. So what that does is add another loop that looks similar to these. It's just a better transition in my opinion. I've actually tried so many different methods um, when I first started crocheting and so far this is the one that I like the most, at least for the single crochet ribbing. I do have other methods for let's say half double crochets or slip stitch ribbing and you can find those videos in my YouTube channel as well and if you haven't please consider subscribing and hitting that notification it really helps my, uh, my channel I do work full time so whenever I get the chance to record videos or work on a project um, I jump on it because I love doing this and um, I also need a job <laughs> so maybe one day I can quit and do this full time a girl can dream right so make sure that you do have the same number of stitches or at least have an odd number of stitches and because I instruct you to complete your cuffs with an odd number of rows then if you follow each row you should also have an odd number of stitches in your setup round. Okay, so I'm almost at the end here. So if you want to double check, make sure you have an odd number of stitches. Now you're going to want to work a slip stitch into the first single crochet. Okay, so to join the round, I'm going to remove my hook, remove my marker there, and then I'm going to insert my hook from the back to the front. I want to make sure my working yarn is down here. I don't want it to be on top like that. So insert your hook from the back to the front and then grab the loop and place it on your hook and pull it through. Okay, that gives it a, a nicer transition when you join your round. Okay, so before you move on, you can go ahead and double check to see if you like the size. So now we're going to work in pattern. So this is just alternating between a single crochet and a double crochet. And although that's two stitches, we want an odd number because we're going to be working in a continuous round. So first stitch, chain one, one single crochet into the same stitch. And then place your marker there. I'm going to place it down here just so that I can work into the stitch when I come around. We're going to work in a continuous round. So this top stitch here is where I'm going to work the next stitch of round two. Okay, so that was one single crochet. Into the next stitch we're going to work a double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch through both loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, 
pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, that's one double crochet. So you're going to repeat alternating single, double, single, double, single, double, all the way around. And when you get here, you should end with a single crochet. So next stitch, single crochet, next stitch, double crochet. So I'm going to repeat that all the way around. Okay, so I am on the last stitch. Remember you end with a single crochet. So we're not going to join our round, we're going to work in a continuous round. This is my first single crochet here. That's going to be the first stitch of my new round and that was a single crochet. So now we're going to work the double crochets on top of the single crochets and the single crochets on top of the double. So our last stitch was a single and our next stitch, which is the first one of round two, is going to be a double. So right into that very first single crochet, you want to work your double crochet. You can move your marker up as you work So this double crochet here, I'm going to work one single crochet. This single crochet here, I'm going to work one double crochet. So you're still alternating between the single and double crochets and you just want to look below to the previous round to make sure that you're working the opposite stitch. So if you see a single crochet, you'll work a double crochet. This okay, so I just worked this double crochet on the single and now I'm going to work a single crochet over the double. So you can tell that the single crochet has a little bit more space or hole than the double crochet. So technically the double crochet is taller so what the single crochet is doing is pulling it down. Also you'll see that there's a little tiny loop here for the double crochets. Just things to look for if you get a little lost. Okay, so I'm going to repeat all the way around. You want to stop every once in a while just to check to make sure you're on the right track. Um, I do get easily distracted with my kids, so sometimes I work like two single crochets in a row or two double crochets in a row and um, it's good to catch it early on instead of much later <laughs> and having to pull back your work. Okay, so this is the last stitch. So here I marked the beginning of round two and that was a double crochet so I'm going to work a single crochet. You can move your marker up as you go and you're going to repeat that until you're happy with that size. For me, I went right to the base of my thumb. So I crocheted until it was about right there and then I started working this part here. Okay, and for me that was seven rounds from here to here. I do have a single crochet round right there, so it's technically from here <laughs> to here is seven rounds. So just try it on as you're crocheting to see if you like the fit. Some people like it higher, more coverage on the thumb, some people don't. So it's all personal preference. I do have a chart in the pattern for the different sizes. Okay, so this is the first stitch of my sixth round, and this is the seventh round. Okay, so we're not counting the setup round. That's just to set up for your um, hand portion. And I know my tail is right here, but my beginnings here, it tends to go diagonally in this direction. So in case you're wondering why that doesn't line up, <laughs> Okay, so when you're 
separating for the thumb hole, you can decide where you want it. Because we worked in a continuous round and our um, seam here is seamless, then I would just start at the beginning of the round for the armhole. So you can try it on to see if you like it. Okay, so again, I stopped when it was right here. And what I did was I counted the stitches that goes around here to the center here. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I counted seven stitches. Okay, so I left seven stitches open and then I chained three. Okay, so if you're leaving seven stitches, make sure you chain an odd number as well. So for me, that was three. If you left, say, eight stitches, you can chain either um, two or four. Just make sure it's the same. Um, and it really depends on how big your thumb is and or how much space you want or how tight you want that hole. So I'm going to skip seven stitches. So here's the first stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is the eighth stitch here. And I'm going to chain three. That'll give it some space here for your hand, for your fingers. Okay, so I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. And then I'm going to go over here to this marked stitch. Okay, so now you want to pay attention to what stitch is here. So the one I marked, the eighth stitch, after the seven that I skipped, is a double crochet. So what I want to do now is work a single crochet into that stitch. We want to continue in pattern. So this is a single crochet here. I'm going to work a double crochet. Okay, so I'm going to continue in pattern around. And I'll show you what to do with the three stitches the three chain stitches. Just make sure that you stay in pattern working your single crochet over your double crochets and work your double crochets over your single crochets. Okay, so that is the last stitch of the round. So here I have three chain stitches and then this next stitch here is a single crochet. And these are the seven skipped stitches. So what I'm going to do is work a single crochet, double crochet, and a single crochet into those three stitches, keeping in pattern. So my last stitch here is a double. So this is going to be the first stitch of the round now for me. So into the next stitch, which is your chain stitch, the three chain stitches here. I'm going to work into the first chain stitch, working one single crochet, and I'm going to work through both loops. Next, okay, the next chain stitch, I'm going to work a double crochet because I want to keep in pattern, alternating my single and double crochets. And the last chain stitch will be my single crochet. Oops, make sure you go through two loops. It gives it a little bit more stability. Okay, now we're back over here. And remember we worked a single crochet over the double after we skipped the seven. So we're going to work a double over the single crochet. That's why it's important to work an odd number of chain stitches if you're going to skip an odd number of stitches for your thumb. Again, if I were to skip eight stitches, I might consider working two or four chain stitches depending on the size. And you can try it on after this round. And if you don't like it, you can just pull it out and try again. Okay, keep in mind that I did work one single crochet around here, so that pulled it in more. If you were to leave that alone, of course you could make it tighter or looser or whatever you like, because I didn't decide to put this on until the last minute. 
Okay, so now I'm just going to continue in pattern in a continuous round like I did down here for this part of my hand and I stopped when it reached the knuckles. Okay, again, it's easy to just slip it on and see how it fits. Okay, so for me that was four rounds from where I separated for the thumb to the top here and then I finished off with slip stitches all the way around. So I'm counting the rounds from here up. So there's one round that you worked right after this one. I'm not counting that one. So I'm just counting the rounds that start here up. So there is a round where you started here, worked all the way around and ended here. So my first stitch will be here. So I'm moving my marker up as I go and I'm counting this as the first round of the hand. And I worked a total of four rounds. Okay, so I've worked four rounds and this is the beginning of my round, so I'm going to stop here. And again, you can try it on as you go to see how you like it. Okay, so that looks good to me. So now you're going to work your last round of just slip stitches and that's optional. You can leave it like this. I think it looks fine as well. So if for some reason you end with a double crochet, then I want you to work another single crochet before you work your slip stitch so that you're not pulling such a tall um, stitch down to a slip stitch. And that's not going to be in the pattern because I think I'll just confuse everybody. So <laughs> letting you know here. Okay, first stitch, I'm going to work a slip stitch. So just insert, pull up a loop through the loop on your hook. And you want to work the slip stitches loosely. If you have trouble um, with your gauge or with your tension, I recommend you go up another size if you can't um, work your slip stitches loosely, um, especially with slip stitches. Um, some people find it really hard to keep a looser tension. Okay, so almost there. So right here is the first stitch of the round and this one here, it's always the stitch to the side that's the loop that belongs to the post you see down here. So this is going to be that stitch for me. So I'm going to fasten off and grab your tapestry needle. Go ahead and pull on the loop till the tail comes through. This is the first stitch here this loop. So I'm going to work, I'm going to insert my needle through that loop like that. And then I'm just going to go back down here and through the inside row. So I'm going to work one round of single crochets here. So I have seven stitches here that I skipped. I have three stitches up here, so that's 10. And then in the corners where they meet, I'm going to work one single crochet on each side. So that'll give me a total of 12 stitches. So if you had eight here, two here, that's 10 plus the two is 12. So you just want to basically add one on each corner. It doesn't really matter. If you feel like you need this a little bit smaller, you can even pull your stitches together by working at a decrease. So a single crochet two together somewhere. So I love crochet because it is so adjustable. So this was the first stitch. You see here, there's already a stitch in this stitch. So remember, I want to work two additional stitches. That's where I'm going to place my additional stitch. So you don't really have to be strict on the number of stitches you have, just make sure that you do have the same stitches for both pieces. 
Okay, so I'm going to chain one and work one single crochet in the same stitch into the next seven stitches, the stitches that you have across here, work one single crochet into each of those single crochets, work one single crochet into each of those stitches. I'm working right over my tail. Okay, so this is the last stitch right here. And then I'm going to work a stitch on the side. So if you take a look here, this stitch here was worked into this stitch. Just like this side, I'm going to work one single crochet into that stitch. So that's my other extra stitch. Now I'm going to come up here and look for the three stitches that I chained and worked into. So here's one, two, and three. Okay, so one single crochet and another one in the center and the third one. Okay, now I'm just going to fasten off and join this round. Pull off my hook, insert from the back place the loop onto the crochet hook and pull it through and then just pull that tail through and tighten. Okay, so now I have the single crochet around the thumb here. It just gives it a, a little nicer um, finish. Okay, so now you're just going to weave in your ends on the inside. So because I have three ends, I'm just going to flip it inside out so that's easier to weave in my ends. I actually forgot to shove this tail in, so what I'm going to do is just... So I'm just going to tuck that back in so that's on the wrong side. That was the tail that I worked um, along with my stitches. You know, I never know if I am weaving in my ends the right way. I just do whatever I think is best. <laughs> um, so if you have tips and tricks, please leave a comment and let me know. Okay, so I want to secure that and pull through. I like to just go through some loops, go back, just kind of weaving it around, not really staying in the same place because then you'll create some bulk in the fabric. So there, coming back around these, oops, three, going back. Again, I always like to tie it so that it's secure. So you just go through a loop and wrap your yarn around once and then holding the yarn in place just pull and tighten. My mama taught me that. <laughs> she did a lot of uh, sewing and stuff. So I'm just going to... Okay, so I just used... I used less than one ball of this. This had... 115 yards. It's always so hard for me to determine how much someone needs for a project because I always give instructions for um, adjustments and so my recommendation, buy more than you need. <laughs> always best to have too much than not enough. So this is pretty much good for both sides so there isn't a left or right side to this. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't, please consider subscribing. It really helps out my channel. And don't forget to hit that notification button so that you'll be notified every time I post a video. And leave a comment. I'd love to hear what uh, videos you'd like me to make. All right, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.